Good morning, everyone. I want to believe that you all can hear me. Thank you all very much for joining to this session. Uh, our session today is a very interesting one. The type of um, topic I know that every business owners out there would definitely love to um, hear and talk about, yes. Uh, thank you all very much. Yes, I see that you said you can hear me. Thank you very much. Before we start, I'd like you to please introduce yourself in the chat box and then tell us where you're joining us from. We would like to know where you're joining us from and um, let's get to know each other in the chat box. Thank you very much. Keep the chat box buzzing and um, introduce yourself and um, tell us about where you are joining us from and maybe tell us about your business. Yes, just a little introduction. And while you do that, um, my name is Eric Chubukola Oluwafumilayo, and I am the business support officer here at Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. And um, with me today, our facilitator for this, our wonderful webinar is um, Ade Dayo Adewale. She will be taking us on um, this session and, um, you know, helping us to understand the perspective to and put justice to this very topic. And um, before we go on, I'd quickly- Hello like everyone, about... good morning, welcome. Good morning, Adedayo. Before we start, I'd like to quickly talk about LSETF. The Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, LSETF, was established by the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund law in 2016. The fund's mandate is to achieve true provision of access to affordable finance to nano, micro, small, and medium enterprise. We offer training to youth in technical and vocational skills. We offer business supportive services to entrepreneurs and business owners. And um, we also help to develop and implement interventions targeted at the technology ecosystem in the state. Our mission is to enable and realize their aspiration by providing a leverage for them to assess finance and also support them to attain skills acquisition. Having said this about LSETF, I would like to um, tell us about our, our, our facilitator here today. Today on the session, we have Ade Dayo Adewale. She is a financial inclusion innovation manager, an agile business transformer, MDCEO investment partner, and SME consultant. She started her career in the SME sector with AB Microfinance Bank, a multinational bank with its head office in Berlin, Germany in 2009. She grew from a trainee loan officer to a senior credit analyst. She moved from there to become a branch manager at Let She Go Microfinance Bank. For more than three years, she conducted, she conducted lending and technology induction training for new intakes and seasonal training for all staffs. She is part of the business development team, successfully launched the education loan and health sector loan product at the Let She Go FFB. She went on to start the first education focused microfinance bank in Nigeria, Edfin Microfinance Bank, as the head of the commercial department. She later became the MD CEO of LifeGate Microfinance Bank Limited. A desire for technology advancement in inclusive finance led her to become the head of sales at PayEPO Nigeria as SME focused fintech. She holds a bachelor degree in accounting from the prestigious Benson Idaosa University, a private university in Edo State, Nigeria, where she went further to get a master's in business administration finance option at Ladoke Akitola University of Technology. She is a microfinance certified member of the Chartered Institute of Bankers, Nigeria, and she, he, she has a certificate in digital strategy for business from Columbia Business School Emeritus. Wow. That for me is a very 
also biography there. Well done, well done, well done. In the chat box, can we please welcome Ade Dayo, Ade Wale. And I want to see it in the chat box. Please clap your hands and welcome her as she takes us through this session this morning. We all know very much that um, leveraging loan as well as grants is a very integral part of scaling your business. How do we do that? What do we need to do? And um, what are the things that we need to know in order for us to be able to leverage on grants as well as loan to scale our business as a business owner? All of these and more would Adedayo Adewale be making justice to for us today. So welcome her. Thank you very much. Adedayo, you have a floor, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for joining. And thank you, LST, for having me. LST, for have been doing awesome things in the um, rules. Um, thank you everyone for participating. I'm glad you are here today. All right, so if you have any questions, please leave it on the chat box and I'll um, give time for question and answer. All right, so I'm talking about upscaling your business with loans and grants. Um, I'll, first of all, I'd like to demystify some of the things we have heard. You know, sometimes people say, ah, it's not good to take a loan, it's not good to take this, but I'm telling you the truth, that's not entirely true. It is good to get financial aid for your business, both in grants and in loans. It is good to have um, uh, uh, financial support, especially when you have it. Now, we'll go into it by first of all defining loans and grants. They are not the same thing. Although both of them are the most common ways to fund your business. They have similarities, but I'll quickly highlight some of the difference. So um, grants, actually, um, grants most of the time is permanent. Um, maybe um, there's an initiative to fund uh, people in agricultural sector or buy a particular equipment for people in fashion sector. Once that is bought or once that money is released, it is permanent. So it's, it's yours. Unlike loan, loan is temporary. You can take loan for uh, one month, one week, uh, six months, one year, you still have to pay back, you understand? But grant, once it's given to you, it is permanent. And uh, most of the time, grants are cost-free. You, um, you don't pay interest when you take a grant, you don't. But for loans, you have to pay loan fee, interest, and all that. Then, um, because you don't need to repay grants, uh, there's a risk in financial borrowing for loan, you need to repay it according to pre-agreed terms and conditions. You have to repay the loan. Uh, for grants, the amount is always fixed. So, uh, or you can't even use grant for everything. It is usually for a specific thing. Um, let me say, for example, LSCTF decide that, oh, um, we are focusing on um, empowering schools with computers. So at the end of the day, they might say, oh, we are giving schools 10, 10 laptops each. You cannot use that to buy, but it is for laptop, so it has to be for that, you understand? So the amount is always fixed. Uh, the project is always targeted. You, you can't use it for um, um, a various um, project. You can only use it for the exact um, project it is targeted for. So um, that's the difference between loans and grants. You have to repay loan for grants. You don't have to repay it. Um, loans are easier to get and they are everywhere. You can get loan anytime you need a loan for, for grants. I'm sometimes based on research, a need that has just been identified. Like when we had that NSAS pro program, we had relief fund for NSAS. When we had um, um, COVID, we had relief fund for COVID. You understand? So all these are um, targeted um, funding to uh, most of the time alleviate a, a, a present problem. Unlike loan, where you can um, walk into a, finance, a financial institution and obtain a loan at any time you need it. For grants, it's usually for a specific period and um, it might be from family, it might be from uh, friends, it might be from government or initiative, um, non profit making organization, charitable organization, grants can come from everywhere. But for loan, most of the time, you get loan from financial institutions, top party lenders, and, and so on and so forth. Now, loans are not just a financial loan. Um, if your supplier say, you know what, uh, pay 500,000, I'll supply you 1 million worth of goods, you have taken a loan. 
because it is a lending, it is credit, it's increasing your leverage risk. You understand? So you have taken a loan. It's not just when they give you money and say, go and buy. Once you take any form of credit, you have already taken a loan, okay? All right, so how do I now use this lending to scale my business? We're going to talk about four things. Um, the first one is you need to, first of all, identify the specific need. I'll break them down one by one. Let me just tell you the four key things. One, you need to identify the specific need at time. So what your business need next year is not what your business is now. So identify the need part time. Not that, um, oh, there's a loan now in LSTF where everybody's collecting. You, 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 let me go and collect. What exactly do you need loan for? I'll dwell on that more later. Second thing is you need to get a right fit loan. Ensure the loan is right fit. Third um, point is you need to maximize growth opportunity. If you are adding additional capital to your business, it has to be to maximize growth opportunity. I will explain further. And finally, you need to adhere judiciously to the investment plan. You need to follow through on the investment plan. If I do these four things, you will see how your business will grow. You will be able to repay the loan, but the impact will still be in your business. Your business will grow, okay? Wow, okay. <laughs> um, if I'm too fast, you can leave a message and um, I will take it later, okay? Thank you. So I think the first thing you need to do is identify the specific need of the business. What does your business need funding for right now? If your business does not need funding right now, leave it. But if you have identified a need, you can take loan, credit line of credit, or, to, or if grant is available, to support yourself. Identify the investment plan and the economic advantage. What does that mean? You are a school, you want to get a school board. What is the economic advantage? Is it, is it going to add to the number of students? Is it going to um, be an additional source of income? What exactly is the economic advantage of that investment plan to so your business? If it's something you know that you don't need now, you don't need to take a loan for it because um, you, you can't use a loan to try out things, no. Use your own money to try them out so that when it feels at least it's money you lose. You will not lose reputation. You won't lose peace of mind. Um, suffer of somebody coming to harass your business, putting your name on credit bureau as um, um, uh, someone that is owing, bringing down your credit rating. That's not good for you, and it's not good for your business. Okay. So also ask yourself, what other alternative do I have? Um, throughout the years. Each time I ask people that question, they find it difficult to answer. If I ask, why do you need a loan? They always tell me what they need a loan for. If I ask you now, why do you need a loan? You say, oh, I want to buy um, a new sewing machine. I want to buy a DI printing machine. I want to uh, 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 buy more material so that I can make more. That is what you want to need loan for. But that's not why you need a loan. Because there are other alternatives. You can, there are other ways you can get that all those things you need. There are, loan, loan is not the only way you can get it. There are other ways you can get it. So why do you need the loan? What other alternative have you tried before going for um, line of credit? So ask yourself these three things for you to identify your real need. What does your business need right now? What is the economic advantage of that thing right now? If I'm buying... Um, more material to make more shoe, for example, I'm buying more leather to make more shoe. What is the economic advantage? Is it so that I will take advantage of transportation costs? I won't be going all the time to the market. Is it so that I'll take advantage of discounts? So if I buy bulk, I get discounts, which means there's an advantage. There has to be an economic advantage of that investment plan. If not, you are just stressing yourself for no reason. So what is it? Analyze the economic advantage. And finally, Check out if there are other alternative um, source of funding or how you can manage it without taking a loan. Okay. Um, so let's go to the second point, which is get right fit loan. Please do not take a working capital loan for assets. Do not. Let me explain them in a simple term. So I go to market two times a week. And each time I go to market, I buy goods of 500000 and I use transport to bring them home. So I'm looking at it that if I have this money and I go to market once a week, hmm, I will still use the same transport, which means I am reducing the transport 
first course by going once a week. So I approached a, a, a financial and I said, you know what? I buy goods one million every week, but I have to go twice because I can't pull one million out of my business at once. But I can pull out 500, go. By the time I sell again, pull out another 500, go. But if you give me um, an addition to what I have, I can go once a week. And they say, you know what? We can only give you 350,000. And you add that 350,000 to your 500,000. How much do you have? 850. You go to market, you buy um, a goods of one week, you buy it once. You take advantage of discount, you take advantage of transport, um, um, absence from shop. Because most of the time, when you leave your business, you don't know what's going on with it. You take advantage of all that just by that additional uh, fund. Now, why do you need to have that money with you for two years? 18 months. Why? It's working capital. It's to help you um, uh, build that uh, capital to the point that when you are not going to market, you can take 850 out of your business, not just 350. By the time you do that for six, seven, eight months, you should be okay. But when you are taking a loan for assets, you want to buy equipment, you want to buy a machine for your business, don't take short-term loan because sometimes you take a loan and you say you take a weekly loan, for example, to buy machine. By the time your repayment have reached, the machine itself, they've not brought it from you. You have not even put the machine, you have not installed it, you have not put it to use, you haven't done anything, and you have started repaying the loan. So at the end of the day, the um, income you would have generated by using that machine, you're already losing it by repaying that loan with interest because the loan has not generated that interest that you are paying. The loan is supposed to be used to buy a machine. You use the machine for the business, take money from it, then from that money, pay your interest. So you have, if you are repaying that loan without having put the machine to use, you are repaying that interest from your That's why you should ensure your loan is right fit. Don't take working capital loan for asset. Don't take asset loan for working capital. Ensure you have a right fit loan, okay? And ensure the repayment terms are favorable. You can buy, you cannot be ordering your goods from, say, Cano, and you take a weekly loan. One week, you have not even seen the goods. So you see, you need to ensure the terms are favorable, the repayment terms are favorable to your business at that time. You can be buying from abroad and you take a million dollars and one week you're you are already, or somebody that is into poultry, you want to use loan to buy more uh, fish, the fingerlings, and grow them into table size. You need at least three to four months to do that. So if you take a loan and you start paying immediately, you have not done anything. By the time you finish, your business would have, you, you feel the impact by the time you finish paying the loan. Feel the impact on the business because the business would have been affected adversely. So ensure that the repayment terms are favorable. Okay. Now, thirdly, maximize good opportunity. Whatever you are using loan to do for your business should cover um, increasing market strategy getting discounts and getting equipment for increased productivity. Whatever you are using the loan for must be something that will bring more things. It must generate more. If it's not going to bring more, there's no point. So if you are taking a loan and you want to use it to add to your working capital to ensure that you have more goods, you take advantage of discount, transportation costs, um, varieties, because our customers are spoiled. If they want blue, you have green, there's problem. So you want to have all the variety so that when your customer comes there, they pick and choose. You want to have that. It's good. It's adding to your business. You want to buy equipment to have in, to increase your stock. Fine. You want to buy a new freezer for your uh, 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 for your uh, cold room business. Fine. You want to buy electric machine. There's a special machine now that they used to whip cloth. One kind you want to buy that. Good. It's increasing productivity. Those are the things you should lose loan for. And when you do that, you will increase productivity for your business. You will upscale your business. You see that your business will grow when you use the loan for the right things. And also invest in marketing. Invest in marketing. Anybody that is doing a business and it's not, there's no marketing. It's as if you are blinking in the dark. Nobody is seeing it. You are doing awesome things, but nobody knows about it. Leverage on WhatsApp. You know too many people. I'm telling you, the people you know, they are enough for you to meet your sales target. You know too many people. But then the only thing you share is what somebody share with you. It doesn't concern you. If your WhatsApp is for your business, please use it for your business. Share things about your business. In fact, flood your people, flood timeline about your business, about your business. 
What is your business with what somebody is doing in Abeokuta? You want to come and share? Leave that matter. Focus on what matters to you. You have taken a loan. It's no longer business as usual. You need to ensure that you maximize that capital in your business. And now to do that is to ensure that whatever you're using it to do is increasing productivity, is giving you discount, and is increasing your output market strategy. People are knowing what you are doing and you are growing. And finally, please avoid version of fund. Do not do that. Do not. You take a loan to stock up your business, please stock up your business. Don't use the loan for anything else. If you do, you are going to um, um, lose because you're going to be paying interest from a capital that has not added anything to your business. Do not divert the fund. Don't try new adventure on borrowed fund. So Maman Gozi is selling wrapper. People are going there all the time. It means it's wrapper that is selling now. Loan and told them at the loan place that you want to use that money to buy, you sell rice and uh, spaghetti, tin tomato. You say, oh, I want to buy more rice and spaghetti. Before they gave you the loan, they did an analysis and they know that, oh, these are things that people are eating. Even if you are mad, you see it. Even if you, are, you don't have money, you will find it by force because you must eat. So they give you this loan because they know that they have done projection. They know you will grow. If you put this loan in the business, the business will grow. Do you not use that loan. And you want to go and try to start selling clothes because my man goes in selling clothes. Please. You see, that adventure is good. I like diversification, but try with your own money. Don't try with loan. Adhere to the investment plan religiously. Use all, don't, don't remove from it. Don't say, let me just use small. Yeah, I keep small. Don't keep small. Put everything in the business. When you not generate from the business, you cannot use it for whatever you want to use it for. Remember, there's a cost attached to a loan. Grant is free, but even at that, you need to use it for what it's meant for. Because when they give you a grant to buy a machine and you do not buy it, when they are doing the, the analysis and data, it's, uh, it affects it. At the, at the end of the day, when there's another grant, you will not be able to get it because you did not adhere to the investment plan, to the plan. So please, you need to adhere strictly to the investment plan. It's, it's a good thing. Big corporations, they all take loans to expand their business. You too, you can take advantage of that. And follow these four things, be able to maximize um, loans and grants and be able to upscale your business. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is what I have for you. Okay. I'm trying to see if anybody have question. I'm trying to see if there are questions. Okay. Thanks for the insight. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you to Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm not seeing any question so far. I've not seen any question. I've just been seeing what you're doing. Okay. Okay. Um, is there any grant facility at the moment? I always keep up with LSTF team. When will the next cycle of load and grant open for application this year? Okay, thank you very me. much, Adedayo. Thank you so much for that um, for that presentation. It was um, a very, very direct one. Thank you. Okay, please, if you have questions for Adedayo, kindly um, put your questions in the Q&A box and we would attend to it. Please do not use the chat box for your question. Channel your question to the Q&A box where we would um, read it out and have Adedayo attend to it. Thank you very much. Okay, so I was actually thinking that um, Adedayo was still, you know, having more for us because we still have enough time for the session. It's meant to be like um, a two hour session, but then it is fine. Okay, so we have a question from Rita, which says that, um, okay, our question is for LSTF team. When will the next cycle of loan and grant be open for application this year? Okay, so we have our grant application opened already. 
you can apply for the Lagos Cares um, loan facility. Lagos Cares loan is um, uh, federal government um, grants. Sorry, I said loan, I meant grants. So Lagos Cares grants is a federal government grant uh, to help push in the effect of COVID-19. And um, it is still on because we know that a lot of businesses were really affected during COVID-19 and are just still picking. A lot of people would say, oh, COVID-19, that was way back in 2020. But you'll be surprised the rate at which a lot of businesses are still you know, trying to find their feet in that respect. So the loan application is still on. You have the opportunity to get either um, the grants of application, I mean, is still on and you have opportunity to grant or get grants either to help you pay your um, rent that you could not pay for the space you're using for your business or if you want an IT grant which would help you in getting IT tools that you can use to scale up your business or if you are owing um, a bank and doing COVID-19, you can prove that you were unable to pay that very loan. LSTF is going to help you to um, push in that by paying part of the um, loan that you were owing to a bank. But um, let it be known that such loan would not be paid to you. It would be paid directly to the bank involved. So having said that, yes, we have that on right now. So you can go to our website and assess the um, grant application for Lagos Cares. And our website is www.lsetf.ng, right? So I'm, I'm putting it right now in the, chat, in the chat box. You can um, pick up our um, website from the chat box and um, you can check out what you can benefit from the Lagos Cares grant application. Um, also for the loan, our loan portals for now are not open, but we have a particular loan that is open, which is called the LSETF tax loan. So this loan application is in partnership with um, the senator and it's for a particular senatorial district. You can check our website and see the list of senatorial districts that can benefit from this loan facility. And um, please let it be known that the loan facility, you can get a loan um, size from um, 50 to 1 million. So 50 to 500 for micro enterprise and then 501 to 1 million for SME. You can please check our website and see how you can benefit from this loan facility. Our generic loan application portal is not open yet, but you can keep your fingers crossed and follow us on all social media platform and see in order to have um, first-hand information on when that um, would that loan um, portal will be open. I hope this helps, Rita. Thank you very much. Uh, your second question is also on the same thing, um, ongoing loan and grant program currently running. I guess it has been answered. Thank you very much, Rita. Okay, so we have Sarah Adeyinka Odedui, who says, please, can you give us some of your points? I just joined. Okay, so Adedayo, um, Sarah would want you to just, you know, touch on the points that you've made because she just joined. I don't know if you would like to do that. And um, Yes, I can, I can do that. Okay. Do you want me to just do that now? Yeah, please. Um, okay, maybe I should just go over other questions and see if um, there's any other one that you can answer shortly and uh, because this would take a long time, I guess. Yeah, so um, okay. a lot to about. Um, for the participants, kindly please put your questions in the Q&A box. There's a Q&A box on, um, on the down part of this um, Zoom application. You will see Q&A, you see poll and then chat. Please make use of the Q&A to um, put your questions so that it can be attended to and not the chat box. Thank you very much. Okay, so Ola Tokumbo Ayeni Melo says, good morning. Can a business not yet registered apply for grant and loan? Okay. Uh, would you want to take that question, Adedayo? Yes, I can take that. 
Uh, yes, a business that is not registered can apply for a loan or grant where that is required. Some financial institution will say you have to have a registered business before you can apply. Then for grants, it depends on the uh, person giving the grant. If it's government and the government said, oh, for you to uh, qualify for this, you need to be registered, then you need to be registered. Uh, but for just like she mentioned, she mentioned there are some individual or senator, senators or what that we say, you know, we want to give this grant to people in this line of business and this will be the criteria. So if the criteria does not require you to get registered, there's no problem. However, um, nobody will take you serious if you yourself do not take your business serious. And the first step is by registering the business. So my own advice is that you should get your business registered. Even if you can't do the limited liability one, at least for the uh, venture, register it, okay? I hope I've been able to answer that. Okay, thank you very much, um, uh, Adedayo. Ola Tokumbo, I believe that answers your question. Thank you very much. So you have to put a lot of structures in place for your business in order for you to be able to get good loans and, uh, and in, uh, particularly for grant application. A lot of business owners um, stay built at running their business on a small scale. There is a particular way you can run your business. You need to know at what particular time as a business owner, do you need to take the next step into putting structures in place? Structures in place means you registering your business, getting, getting um, a, an account that is for that business, knowing that you as a business owner are also um, a worker for that business and letting that business be an entity on its own. So um, just adding to what uh, Adedayo has said. Thank you. So I hope that helps you. Um, Omar Dolakbo Raman is asking, is it safe to change business location within the, I guess what you mean is um, changing business location within the time when you're making a loan, um, loan, maybe application or repayment, either of the two. So you might want to answer that, um, Adedaya. All right. So um, let's just, as, uh, we, we believe what you are saying is that uh, you want to use a loan to change your business. Location. So you are selling somewhere or running your business at a location, but you want to take a loan to change your business location. Yes, you can totally take a loan to change your business location, to increase it or to put it your business out there in a more in a place that is more um, easily accessible to your kind of customers. Yes, you can do that. But while you are taking the loan, please explain this investment plan. Don't lie. Don't say you want to use it to buy stock because the terms will be different. If you are changing location, sometimes you might not been able to uh, paint the store, do all the fixtures and fitting within the time that you'll be expected to start repaying the loan. But if this you are able to explain at the beginning, you might be able to get leverage, you understand, uh, a little time for you to put the new location in place and start using that place for business. So please, while you're assessing this finance, uh, so explain all this so that you can get a right fit loan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adedayo, for that, um, just as you did that question. Angela Ukawe is asking, um, her question is, what are the other avenues aside collecting loans? So what other, what other avenues, what other things can you do um, if you want to avoid loan, but then you want to expand your business? Yeah. All right, so um, you might not be able to expand your business that much without loans and grants. Um, there are all these, all these two investment plans, okay? So to stock up your business. If your supplier is able to give you um, a discount or just like I said, uh, pay 500,000, get 700,000 worth of goods, then we'll come back and collect the balance. If you get something like that, you might not need a loan again for working capital. That's what I mean. And sometimes we need to leverage on platforms, um, which is something most SMEs don't do. Uh, platform is an opportunity where um, it's just like having a table. We are three people in the table. Everybody has something to gain from that table. So if I have um, a, a generator, for example, and I'm using it to power only one shop, why can't I create a platform? Rather than you getting a generator, you getting a generator. Let's uh, 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 
pull money together and, and, and fuel it since it can power the three stores. Those are the kind of platform collaboration we need to work with. As it is right now, you need to do that because of the economy. So that's also an alternative to getting a loan to buy that. You can um, um, leverage on platforms and collaboration to get some of these things done. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Angela, I believe that answers your question. So before I go into the other question, I'd quickly like to pick a question from the chat box, but please, this will be the only one I would attend to. Any other questions should please channel your question to the Q&A box so that it can be attended to. Um, you want to know how long it will take for Lagos Cares, um, if you apply, how long it will take for you to get a feedback. Well, um, we can be specific, but we can tell you that immediately we get your loan, um, your grant application, we attend to it and you definitely get a feedback from us within a short period of time. And also you want to know who to contact um, if you have applied in order to get feedback. You can please call our call center um, number um, from, I'll put the call center number on the chat box so that you can, put, you can pick it up from there. Uh, you can call the call center number and ask for your application status, right? So please, you can do that. I am trying to put the um, call center number in the chat box, but let me just call it for you. It is 017000. 017,969. And um, you can also reach us on um, 090-6021. Thank you very much. So you can reach us on these two numbers and uh, you can definitely uh, let us know how you would, whatever it is that you have for us. At any time, please feel free to reach out to LACTF through those numbers. Thank you very much. I hope that answers your question. Please going forward, I'd like people to please, participants should please put their questions in the Q&A um, box. Thank you very much. And so Oluwa Femi Odulano, says um, he would like to know how to assess, uh, assess grant from LSETF. Okay, so um, you can actually assess grant from LSETF. I, I mentioned it, I hope you were on the session at that point. Yes, you can um, apply for our Lagos Cares grants, go to our website. I put our website in the chat box and I can do that again. Please check out the um, Lagos Cares and see which of the grants that you can apply for. Uh, you can do that through uh, Lagos Cares Grants. Thank you very much. I hope that answers your question, Oluwa Femi. Thank you. Okay, so an anonymous attendee is asking, is there any grant facility at the moment? Yes, I've answered that. The Lagos Cares Grants is um, accessible right now at LSETF. And then Mary Iola is saying, is it right to raise a loan to rent a, a workshop or to furnish it in order to get a bigger or better environment? I think um, Adeda, you has answered that question earlier where somebody else asked, yes, you can definitely get a loan. It's called capital, um, um, it's called um, expense loan, like um, capital. You want to use it to get like uh, another shop. It's also part of expansion really. So maybe you have a shop, you want to get a bigger one, you, you're retaining that one or you actually want to move to a bigger one. You're expanding, yeah, so you can get a loan to do that. You would let, know how you want to, get that kind of loan, how much you can get and what's your fits, the size of the loan that you would like to get. So I guess that answers your question. It is advisable to get loan um, loan um, facility to do that as well. Yes, thank you very much, Mary. I hope that answers you. And um, for Iabo, Iabo Babalola is asking, um, Okay, Yama Babalala wants to know if um, if grant is backed by government, would there be condition attached to it? 
and how do you know? So I think Adidayo should answer that. Yeah, let me leave you to answer that. <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, some grants are backed up by government. Like I said, grant is determined by whoever is giving it out. Is it government? Is it charity organization? Is it um, well-meaning individuals? Those are the people that determine uh, how that grant will be administered, the condition attached to it. So it's not, there's no blanket condition attached to grant. It depends on who is giving the grant at that moment, okay? And um, when do you know? Oh, I'm sure once the uh, condition, that's part of what's communicated to you. Once you know that there's a grant ad available, please ask what are the conditions? What are the eligibility criteria so that you know if you qualify for the grant or not, okay? So once the grant is committed, the, the condition will always go with the communication. If it's not there, please ensure you ask, ensure that you actually you're actually eligible for the grant. Thank you very much, Adedayo. And to add to what Adedayo has said, please bear in mind that once it is called a grant, you are not expected to have any condition. Now, because it is actually a government grant, you might be requested to tender some documentations that are important to ascertain if this grant you have requested for, you really do need it for your business. So for instance, some persons will want to take advantage of such um, opportunity. And um, let's, let's say, for instance, the Lagos Cares um, Grant, which is supposed to support you in um, paying for your loans, in getting you um, leverage for IT grants and all of that. And someone that, are, that has not been affected at all in any of this is coming up to say, oh, I also want the grant. No, because you were not affected by, by um by COVID-19, or you were not even in business as at that time, or you, you were able to run your business perfectly within that time, but you just feel, oh, because it's a grant, I want to apply for it. Documentations will be requested of you to ascertain that this thing you're claiming is real, you were affected, and as such, you are definitely, um, um, you're definitely supposed to get that kind of opportunity so that we don't give this opportunity to the wrong person. And that's why we would ask for documentation. So aside documentations, there are no conditions attached to giving you grants, especially from the government. Thank you very much, Iabo. I hope this answers your question. Okay, so um, Slaiman Ibrahim is asking, can I take loan for startup business? Um, yeah, so um, Sal Salman, thank you for that question. It's very vital to what we are discussing. So you see, um, there are a few lend lenders that actually give loans for startup. Uh, that's because most of the time, we that we want to start the business, we do not have the right tools to start the business. You don't know the business you want to start. You don't know why you want to start the business. You just know you want to start business. Um, if you have a good uh, feasibility study, you have actually put in your, your effort in ensuring that you know what you want to do, how you want to do it. You have um, done something on your own self. You now need a financial backing that you can get. But most financial institutions expect you to have run that business with your own money, friends' money, savings, family money. You would have done that within six months. Me, I prefer you because that's when you have gone through the circle. You can tell me how did this business perform during um, school break? How did the business perform in January? How did the business perform during fasting? How did this business perform during rainy season? If you do not have any experience in all that, you don't even know how your business is performing. You don't know if your business will thrive more during rainy season or others. So please, before you say you want to take a loan to start the business, you need to ensure that you have done your own work. You have a good feasibility study to the number. I'm going to sell five. This is what I'll make from the five. If you do that, some institutions actually give um, startup loan, but majorly it's advisable that you use because most of the time, um, you don't even know if the business is going to last for that one year. It might fail. You might learn a lot of things in the process that if you're not put into use, you'll be able to do something better. And until you do, it's easier for you to do all that with your own money than with a borrowed money. Then you are hooked. You are unable to pay. You're having challenges here and you're unable to even run the business and the borrower is on you to repay money that you can't get. So it's far, use your money, family money, savings, 
away from friends to start a business. When you have gone through the whole circle, you can now say, oh, this is how this business performed. Then that's when it's as advisable to get a loan. But there are other grants available for startup. There are some kind of loans too that are available for startup. They usually, um, the terms and condition is usually favorable to startup. So they give you time. So you can have that loan and they say, you know, you don't pay back until maybe one year or you don't pay back until six months. Like I said, get a right fit loan. If you are taking a loan for startup, ensure it is a loan for startup so that you will not run into problems. Okay, I hope I've been able to answer you. Thank you very much for that, um, Adedayo. Okay, um, what documents are required? I'm trying to see the ones that I, I can quickly answer. So is there any grants and loan opportunity now? I think I've answered that severally. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can um, check our website and um, see how you can get that opportunity, www.lctf.ng. We have a grant have, um, application ongoing right now. Um, for our loan, we have a specific loan. You can check our website and see if you can benefit this loan. It's called tax loan. Thank you very much. Okay, for Amat Oloye, she's asking, is there government grants for private schools? Um, so you can, if you're a private school, you can still apply for the Lagos Cares in as much as you can prove that any of the prerequisites, you, you can prove that yes, you definitely have um, something to prove that maybe you could not pay your rent, maybe you could not pay your staff, maybe you could not pay loans within the period of COVID-19. You can apply for Lagos Cares grant. Thank you very much, I hope that answers you. Akim Adelangwa, um, you want to know the documents that will be required to apply for loans or to apply for grants? How does, how does one create an effective business plan to be able to qualify for loans and grants? So I would leave that your second question to Adedayo to attend to, while I just briefly let you know that to apply for LSCTF loan application or grant application, you have to have your LASRA. LASRA is um, an evidence to show that you are a resident of Lagos State. And um, we do this because we want to be sure that the people benefiting from LSETF um, programs are those that are residing in Lagos because that is the um, idea in the first place. So you need to prove that you are a Lagos resident and show that you reside in Lagos with your LASRA. You have to be um, um, a tax compliant person. That is that you're paying your tax regularly, except for those that are just starting the business. So if you're just starting the business, you need to be captured by registering for tax and show us the certificate to show that you're registered for tax. But for ME and SME, you have to be a taxpayer and show evidence that you're paying your tax regularly. And then you also have to have a government issued ID card, be it a um, international passport, be it um, your driver's license and um, other government issued ID card that can prove your, uh, that you can show. Uh, also, you also need to have um, a guarantor for MES and ME. You also have to have two guarantors for those applying for SME. And um, for, SME, you have to have uh, at least six months bank statement, a year bank statement. And for ME, you have to have at least six months to three months bank statement. I guess this should help you. You can check our website for further information. I can help you on documents that you need in order to apply for LSTF's loan and grant. I hope this answers your question, one part, Akin. While Adedayo should please do justice to how can one create an effective business plan to, and to be able to qualify for loans and grants application here. Thank you, Adedaya. Over to you. All right. Uh, thank you, Akim, for the question. Yes, so um, I would like to say that having an effective business plan should not be just for, because you want to qualify for loan and grant. I think a business plan is what every business should have, especially when you are... Um, uh, venturing into a new plan or you are acquiring a new equipment, you need to have a plan because when you have a plan, it's like a, 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 a blueprint that you work with. 
But if it's to get a loan, a loan, please don't just packaging the business plan just for loan alone, because at the end of the day, you might not get the right fit loan. But have a business plan for your business. Then when you want to take a loan, present it so that you can get a right fit loan, okay? Now, um, having a business plan means answering the three vital questions, which is the why, what, and how. Why do you uh, want to start this business? Okay, I have a passion for this. Oh, I've learned it, I'm skilled. Oh, um, it, it's passed on, which is also a good way to start a business. That's what your mom was selling. You want to go into it to, uh, with your own intellect and um, uh, you know technology. You can now uh, do it in a better way, fine. But my point is, once you answer the why, answer the what, what exactly do you want? Oh, um, I want to start making um, Akara in takeaway plates different from the way my mom sells it by the roadside. That's okay, that's what you want to do. Now, how do you want to do it? And how are you gonna make money from it? If you are taking a loan and grant, all everybody wants, especially for loan, what they want to know is this business, is it sustainable? If I put my money into that your business, will you be able to return my money to me with interest and the business will not die? That's a major question. So how are you going to achieve this your goal in a way that the business will still remain even after repaying the loan. So are you gonna go about getting material? Are you gonna go about preparing it? Who are you going to sell it to? How are you going to advertise this? Where are you getting money from the material from? Are you going to sell it? Are you going to make money? What part of the money are you able to set aside? What part are you able to reinvest in the business? All those you need to put in black and white for your business, not just for taking a loan. Remember, for your business, not just for taking a loan. So um, your, uh, an effective business plan must answer why, what, and how. And that how you need to break down. Let us know how the plan you have to sustain the business in a way that when somebody sees it, the person will be interested in putting money in it and uh, be sure that that money will return with interest, okay? Loans are people's money. Grants are people's money to governments and well-meaning individual charitable organization give grants, but you need to know what you are doing. You cannot say you want to have a business plan and you don't even have a registered business. You don't even have business as its way. So please um, answer the why, the what, and the how in your business plan and you will get good audience. Okay, I hope I've been able to answer you, Akin. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I guess that really um, was a good one. Akim, you can make use of all of this and um, I guess it will help you. Um, Azubike is asking, what about businesses that started after COVID? Um, okay, I, I guess your question would be that businesses that started after COVID can they apply for this LSETF um, Lagos Cares grant? I guess it's a no. Um, what we are looking at is for you to be able to, it's for you to be able to prove to us that your businesses had been established before COVID and that during COVID you had, you know, an effect, you were affected by the COVID and um, you're trying to get your business together. Yeah, so thank you very much for that question, Azubike, and I want to believe that this um, has answered your question. Okay, so I have a lot of about I am a law asking, does LSCTF have an opportunity for NGOs? Um, not yet, no. We also had a social impact organization. So I guess we were running the same thing just in different ways in the sense that we are running as with some few support from the government and while you are just um, a non-profit um, organization. But then we can collaborate, we can work together. Thank you very much. You can send us emails to info at lsetf.ng and um, we can see how we can uh, work together. Um, I guess that answers your question. Uh, a lot of more. Thank you. All right. So we have Wakili Maja. I have applied for some SME loans since and some consultants have come to my place and um, you haven't heard from LSCTF. 
We apologize for that. We are definitely working on it. Everyone that has applied will be getting a feedback from us soon. Thank you very much. I hope that answers you. So I'm taking my time to attend to all the questions concerning LSTF because I know that a lot of people joined this session because they had really want to know how this session is really going to help them in terms of the loan application that they have with LSTF, in terms of those that would like to actually apply as well. How do I meet this application? So I did I, I hope you understand me when I'm trying to attend to them. Thank you very much. Okay, so I have um, Mayaki yes, yes. Day. I don't want to. I don't want to murder that name. I'm sure it's a very good name. So please permit me to just <laughs> gloss over the name and read your question. It says I am into printing. How do I get LSTF website? Okay, so I'm sending you the website right away. You can please check our website and see the kind of benefits you can get from um, LSETF. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Akim Adelawa, is it advisable for startup to engage in loan from the get-go? I think um, Adedayo has answered that question earlier. If yes, what is the best practice to do so? Um, Adedayo answered someone earlier to say that um, as a startup, you need, you, need to, you need to put a lot of things in place before you decide to take loan application. Yeah, although it is actually good for you to make use of um, loan opportunities to start and scale your business, but you must have put strategies in place to know what and what it's involved in order for you to be able to do this successfully. And that's why at LSETF, when we want to give you a startup loan, we do not start with a large amount. We give you opportunity for 50 to 250,000. And a lot of people would come back to us and say, oh, 250,000 is so small. Yes, because we want you to start small, learn on the, on the, on the business. And then when you're coming back, you're able to prove to us that you've been able to do more and expand your business more and as such your worthy of getting a larger amount to re-expand your business. It's always good to start small really when you want to start a business because it reduces the risk involved in businesses for you. So when you start small, you learn, you learn your mistake, you, you, you learn your winnings, you're able to tell, you're able to tell um, your capital away from your savings. You're able to understand your bookkeeping. You're able to understand your accountabilities on that business. And you're able to plan ahead. Give yourself a target, KPI. What's my next target? I'm starting um, a pure water business. I'm starting with a, with a bath. Where am I going from the bath? When exactly do I want to start making use of cooler? When exactly do I want to start making use of freezer? But then if you just get a very big amount of load starting and you're starting all the way from 10 freezers and putting people in place, you might close up in the, within the next six months. Trust me. So that's what we're saying when we say that you need to start small, learn on the business, and then give yourself target and grow higher in your business. Akim, I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the speaker, an anonymous attendee is asking, the speaker mentioned that there are other avenues one can get funding from a side loan. Can she kindly elaborate? Okay, Adetayo, this anonymous would like you to please elaborate on how he or she can um, make use of other avenues to get loan or grant facilities to fund their business. Other avenues. So, um, um, you have other avenues funding. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. We lost you a bit, actually. Okay. Okay. I'm on now, right? Yes, Sorry, we can. Just had a little glitch in my internet. All right, so um, you have other alternative to um, um, loan. You can have a supplier's credit. So where your supplier can supply you more than you pay for and you repay uh, uh, the rest later. So that's an alternative to loan. With that, you don't need to pay. Uh, while you might not enjoy discounts, you won't pay any interest. And I also talked about collaboration collaborating with rather than I gave an example of somebody that needs to buy a generator but you have um, someone that have a generator that can power more than one store 
why not collaborate rather than getting one for yourself? So those are the other ways I'm looking at it. Um, we have savings, we have uh, grants, friends and family. Those are other alternative funding, collaboration platforms. Those are other overdrafts too, is there? There's overdraft, which is based on your deposits in the bank. You can also get an overdraft uh, to fund whatever you are doing. But then the most important thing is to get the right fit funding for that particular project that you need. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. At what point can um, can someone renegotiate loans? So maybe I guess this person means that if they've defaulted, at what point can they renegotiate? Maybe there's a default. Would you like to take that question, please? Yes, I would like to take the question. All right. So um I think the point, the best point to renegotiate a loan is before you, before it's overdue. You know you have a loan to repay next week. You have used this money, so you have sent this money for goods. Somehow there's a delay, you've not even gotten the goods. And even you have gotten the goods and you have sold it, you'd have had money to pay. You do not wait until that day of repayment, they call you, they are looking for you. After one month, after two months, three months, when they finally find you, you now say you want to renegotiate loan. That's not right, that's irresponsible, I'm sorry. It's not responsible at all. You already know that that day you have to pay a loan, you do not have it. You have your reason. It's not like the money is lost. It's somehow tied down somewhere. You have banking problem. You have transfer money from one account to another. It's hooked somewhere. Please, you have to be at the forefront. Oh, see what I am going through. See where I am right now. See what I think I can do. So you need to carry your phone there along because if you are using someone's money to run your business, Part of that business belongs to the person, not just to you. So once something happens like that, before that due date is the right time to go and renegotiate a loan and say, see, see where I am, see what the issues are, come with proofs and everything, and you will be uh, uh, you'll be taken seriously. But not that you sit down and say, well, when they're tired, they will leave me alone, Jerry. Well, I beg, eh? let them call me first for one week. I'll go later. No, that's not right. The best time to renegotiate a loan is before the overdue, once you have seen everything that is happening, quickly go sit down and ensure that you table the matter and please be truthful about it so that they won't rene renegotiate wrongly for you and you still be in the same problem. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Adidayo, for that. Um, okay. So I guess um, this anonymous wants us to. Uh, um, ask answer what documents does a business owner need to assess loans and grants and does the document differs okay so i guess that's what the person wants to know can you please attend to the question what documentation do they need all right business owners and um, does it differ okay um yeah, for you to get a loan, you need to first of all, let the lender know that you have standard, which means you need to have a registered business. You need to be able to identify yourself, which means you need to have a government issued ID card. Then we need to see your financial performance. So usually you are required to print your bank statement. If you have registered your business, it's advisable to open an account in the name of the business so that um, you can have standard and you'll be taken seriously. So you have that. We also need there's what we call KYC and KYCB, which is know your customer and know your customer's business. So you'll be required to prove where you are living. You, you prove your residence. You prove your, your name. You know, they ask you things like your BVN, your NIN number. You need to ensure you have all that. Now, whether those are different from grants, um, I would say most grants don't require your um, financial statement, but if they do, please provide it. They are not, they are like your, they are not asking all this because they want to make your life difficult. It's to aid the decision making and also to help you so that they won't give you a loan that is not suitable for your business or a grant that you do not qualify for. So it's always good to have all that. Ensure you are you are you register your business. Um, she just told you about last right now. Please don't take things for granted. When Lagos State announces, oh, everyone should register for last, don't say, well, it doesn't concern me. It concerns you. It's because government need data to put strategies in place to 
um, alleviate pro poverty, ensure there's um, employment, ensure that they are running the state. They cannot do all that without data, and they cannot have that data if you refuse to go and register. So you need your last right. We need to know that you're a resident of Lagos State because LSTF is Lagos State. So we need to know that you're a resident here so you can benefit from all the great and unique things available in the state. So you need to have last right. You need to register your business, CAC. You need to have tax. We need to know you're a tax payer or how else are we going to get that money? Another person starts to give you loan. No, you need to be a taxpayer. You understand? You need to um, put all this in. My point is all this requirement that is being asked of you is not because anybody wants to uh, make your life miserable. It's because we need it for good decision making. And we also need it to ensure that we are lending right and to the right person. OK, I hope I've been able to um, answer that. Yes, you did. Thank you very much, Radha Thank you for that. Okay, so um, and I think um, this person is anonymous, says um, most MFBs that he or she has come across don't have facilities for long-term loans. How do you think SMEs can go about it? Okay, I don't know what you need long-term loan for, and I don't know what long-term mean for you. Um, I know it's people who are building will take up to three to five years and things like that. So I really don't understand what long term means for an SME. Uh, but usually most MFBs give loans within six months and one year. So uh, except you don't need the loan more than one year, then it has to be for asset because I don't see the reason why you should take working capital loan and you're taking it for more than one year. No, it's working capital. It's just something you add to what you are using to buy. So it shouldn't be. But if you are buying an asset, that uh, like a printing machine now, you know that that printing machine, uh, you can use it for 30 years in your company, 20 years in your company, then you can seek a loan that is more than one year, say 24 months, because at the end of the day, you still need to consider the interest you're paying on the loan. If it's not a reducing balance, it's a fixed uh, rate, you're going to pay more at the end of the day. So um, remember to check the interest before you are requesting for long-term loan. It's not that they don't want to give you long-term loan, but by the time you calculate the interest, even you, you run. So it's better you, you take what's available. And I think LSD have, um, I think they have the cheapest kind of loan you can take in when it comes to lenders for SMEs, just focus on LSTF. Once you're able to get LSTF, they're always considering because most of the time um, it's based on research that have been done part time mm -hmm. and say, okay, this is what these people need, people need part time, and this is what they'll be able to afford to pay back. The same thing for grants, okay? But my point is watch out for the so called long term loan. What are you using it to do? And what does long term mean to you? You shouldn't take loan um, for that long. I think it's only building. Uh, your, your construction and uh, uh, purchase of land for building, all those kind of things. And mm -hmm. you cannot take a really long term uh, loan for. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Um, you remember that we had not attended to Sarah Adeyinka, who says she had like you to give a summary of your points. She just joined. I can see that she's asking again that she's still waiting for you to give a summary of your points before she joined. Can you do that, please? Thank you. Yes, I can quickly do that. All right, so um, I made sure that the points were not too long so that we can take time to answer uh, questions because I think that is far more important than this. You will be able to touch on what you need. All right, so um, a quick summary. I talked about how to upscale your business with loan and grant, and I say we should focus on four things. Uh, one, identify your specific need. Two, I said get right fit loan. Three, I said you should maximize your growth opportunity with the loan or grant you are taking. Then four, I said you should adhere judiciously to the investment plan. Okay, so um, when I say identify your specific need, identify exactly what the business needs part-time, not what the business will need in future or part-time, this minute, what does this business need this minute? When you identify that, ask yourself, what is the economic advantage of this project to my business? The fact that every school have a school bus doesn't mean you have a school bus. Have you considered fuel? You pay bus driver and the bus attendant. Have you considered all that? How many of our students actually need the school bus? So you see, what is the economic advantage of that project to your business? If you see that it's something you can do about without, then there's no point taking a loan to get it. 
um, a loan should not be, oh, because they say loan is available, let me go and take. Oh, LSTF is giving loan, let me go and take. Do you actually, what exactly do you need right now? Even when you do all that, still ask yourself, are there alternatives? Do I have alternative? Because loan is not the only source. Do I have alternative? Is there any other way I can get this project uh, started or I can go about this project without taking a loan? So identify the specific need your business have for now that's required of you to take a loan for or grant for, okay? Now, uh, get right fit loan. Don't get working capital loan for fixed assets. Don't get project loan for working capital loan. It's not the same. Because when you are talking about working capital, you are just looking for money to add to your business, go to market, buy. Uh -huh. You cannot um, take fixed asset loan for a short period. It doesn't make sense. Sometimes before you even buy the machine, like it's just like someone taking a weekly loan to buy, say, school bus. Let me use school bus again. When are they going to even bring the bus, paint it, change the engine, put battery, do all those things? Loan would have started running. So it doesn't make sense. So I'm sure that you don't, the loan you are getting, the terms and condition, everything is favorable to you. Uh, third point is that you must maximize growth opportunity. When you are taking a loan, ensure that this loan is adding to the business, is adding to your productivity. If you are buying a machine, it must increase what you are producing. If it's not increasing what you are producing, there's no point. Someone talked about changing location. Why are you changing location? Are you changing location because you need somewhere bigger or you need somewhere uh, more accessible to people? Most of the time, see most businesses that are thriving now, say they're leveraging on technology. They are not looking for bigger space. They're leveraging on technology. See, some of us are from Akure or Yo, and we are all here right now for over one hour we've been talking. So you see, sometimes it's not just about um, I'm getting that big space. No, maximize that money in a way that it's not just about getting a big space. Ensure when you're getting a big space, it is to be more accessible to the customers. When you're buying equipment, it must add to your business. And also engage in marketing. It doesn't matter what you put in the business. If people don't know what you are selling, you are just blinking in the dark. I talked about leveraging on WhatsApp. I said, most of us, we know too many people. In fact, all the people you know, they're enough to make your business grow. You just need to share the right thing. Share the right thing. Don't concern yourself with something that doesn't concern your business. Focus on your business. You have added loan to that business, which means part of your business has become another person's own. So you have to focus. It's not the time to play. This is the time to put all in it. Start shouting your business every day, every opportunity, every WhatsApp group, everywhere you see yourself. Shout your business so that when people know you, they know this is what you are selling. You have taken a loan now. You cannot joke. So you need to maximize this loan or this grant that you're putting in your business. You need to maximize it so you can measure the impact and say, okay, I was buying like this. Now that I took loan, this is how I'm buying and I'm repaying. When I finish repaying, I should still be buying like that. That is when there's an impact. Okay. So you need to measure all that. Then finally, I talked about adhering religiously to the investment plan. Do not divert the fund. If you want to use it to buy goods, use every, don't say, let me even use 20% to, you know, do good with my life. Put 80% in the business. No, put the whole 100% in the business. Mm? Let it generate on the business. Then you can now say you want to take, but that money put everything in the business. Adhere to the investment plan. Do not divert that fund put it to use for the project it is meant for. Then when you have grown the business, the business can now feed you. Businesses are like children. When you give birth, you do not expect your child to feed you. You keep feeding that child. So you feed your business knowledge, innovation, time, discipline. You feed your business. When that business has grown, it can now feed you. Remember, it is a loan you have put. It is grant you have put another person's money in that business because you cannot use it to play. Pay attention, be disciplined about it, and you will see how your business will grow. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for those points. Paying attention to your business, knowing the strategies that you need to put in place for your business, knowing the worth of your business in order to determine the loan size or grant size that you would want to apply for so as not to choke yourself and the business as well. And then putting real strategies that would help not to drown the business, but scale the business eventually. And knowing that 
even when you take loan, which is very, very important to scale your business, it puts you at the edge to want to give it your best. I usually tell business owners a joke when we have sessions. I say, your business is your nine to five, just the same way we come for our nine to five. You have to take that business with all seriousness. You have to give yourself KPIs, targets on that business. And that is how you're able to tell a successful business owner. Before you get to the point where you can sit back and let people work for your business, you must be the first worker for a bad job home. Permit me to say that. You have to put both hands and put more effort in order for everything to work the way you plan. Thank you very much for that one, Dayo. And Vera and his way, we keep having questions that I cannot overlook in here. So I'd want you to please do justice to some of the questions that we have here. And um, this person is asking that. Is it a must that my business is registered before I assess loan facilities? Oh, there are loan facilities without, uh, uh, there are people who give loans even if your business is registered, yeah. I'm just saying that the first step to creating standard is to register the business. Being intentional about your business, you have to register the business. When you register your business, your business is recorded you have a record. You are taken seriously. Anybody that you talk to, you are taken seriously. Don't you feel embarrassed when you finish talking about your business and they ask you, oh, okay, what's your, and at the end of the day, you don't have a business, a registered business. So please, it's the first step to standardizing your business. It doesn't really take, I don't know, maybe if I know your fear, I might be able to help you understand that registering a business is plus, not minus. It's good for your business. So. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's important for you to register your business. It helps you put structures to that business. And then when you start a business on a small scale, at a particular point, that business should no longer be a small scale business. You should, you know, know at the point where you need to take it up from that small scale to an SME business. And so because you started small does not mean that you shouldn't have a big dream for that business. So taking that first, first step of putting registration in place for that business would help you to align with what it needs to be done or what you need to do in order for you to put um, the business, you know, at um, that position where you can easily, you know, scale and get um, opportunities and leverage on opportunities that can come for you as a registered um, business. So I hope this helps you, Fadin. Um, I also have a lab birthday, Oni, that said, where, where and how can I assess a business plan? Did you get that, Adidaya? Yes. Oh, where can you assess a business plan? Okay, there are a lot of business plans, but I don't know. I can't say categorically if LST have, have um, a business plan portal, but uh, I don't know if you reach out to me, I can actually suggest a couple of places where you can. Uh, get, the point is, don't get business plan, fictitious business plan. Sit with someone who is an expert and let them write a plan for you. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for that one. And you just to add to that, you can as well do your researches. We have a lot of um, AI enabled um, app, app, apps right now that you can actually, you know, get this kind of um, question to them and they can put you through on how to write your business plan yourself, the things that you can put in place. And you can also use Google to get more information on how to build on whatever it is that you get from this app. It is quite a simple thing that you can do on your own. Thank you very much. And if you know you can't, there are a lot of um, firms, accounting um, companies that you can reach out to that can also help you and put you right on how to get this business plan. Thank you. Okay, so um, Chima is saying, um, please, I'd like to know if I can get grants or loan for my farm project. Okay, so you need to have actually started that farm project. Yes, 
it has to be a project that you have already started and you have proof to show that you're you're you are, you're running a farm business and um, if you want a loan application a loan um, facility you can apply for a loan facility but like i said right now we only have just tax loan running and it is from 50 to 1 million that's 50 to 500 for mes 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 and then 501 to 1 million for smes and um, for our grant program you have to be able to show us that you were affected by covid-19 before you can um, apply for that grant um, program, which is Legal Skills Grant um, Opportunity. All right, I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. And um, we have um, Omodala Koraman asking, how does effective bookkeeping and audited accounts help my business? Okay, so I think um, it would be nice for you to attend to this one. Thank you. Okay. Um, effective bookkeeping and audit account will really help your business. Um, I think two weeks ago, I was talking to a lady, she's a fashion person, and she teaches, uh, she does fashion training. When I broke down, uh, just by question, I just asked her question, asked her question, and I told her, you make eight naira per day. She was shocked. Because all this while she thought she was making money. That's what happened when you do have proper bookkeeping and audited account. You just assume that you are making money. You need to have a proper bookkeeping. There are a lot, see, technology has gone far and wide to provide all these things without you um, having to sit with anyone. But even at that, if you still need to um, collaborate or get help with your bookkeeping, because not all of us have the background in uh, bookkeeping. We don't know how to plan all these things, you know? And if you keep checking, LSD always have different kind of training, different kind of training, and you'll be able to know how you can do this on your own. But for now, that you can't do it on your own. You'll get uh, apps that can help you or get someone who can help you. Um, once you have the template, all you need to do is just to put the amount. What did I sell today? What did I buy? How much is my own inside? You even need to know how to do seasonality planning so that when there's a shock, you are not affected. When you want to pay rent, you are looking for money. That's because you do not know that whatever you sell, rent is inside. Before you remove and say, this is my profit. Oh, I bought it 20 naira. I sold it 15 naira. Oh, I've made 30 naira. Really? What about transport, rent? What about even you yourself, your own personal salary, your intellect? Have you considered that? So please, everywhere there's an opportunity for you to learn all these things, please make yourself available and learn. Let's say you have a lot of training program. Make yourself available, learn some of this thing because you need these things to be able to grow your business, okay? Thank you very much for that one, Dayo. And just to add a few flesh to that, bookkeeping is very, very important for your business, either it's registered or not. This, apart from the fact that it helps you to give you leverage for loans and grants, it's also an opportunity for you yourself to be able to assess your business yourself. You're able to tell what your regular turnover will be at the end of the day. You're able to tell what your savings are and you're able to tell what exactly it is that you need to do better or that you need to include to that business. It helps your business expansion. It helps you to know what you're doing wrong. It helps you to know what you're doing right. It helps you to remember those that are owing you as well. So you have your, your credit and debit side of it where you would be able to tell, oh, okay, this person is still owing me, this person I need to, to get money from. Oh, I'm supposed to pay this person. Okay, I made so so sale in a day. You are able to audit yourself in the, in the space of doing how much in the scale of one to 10 do you make in a, in a day, in a week, and in a month. And that would help you to understand that business itself. So it's very, very important for you to, to have bookkeeping for your business. And then it also helps like, Whenever you need loan or grant opportunity and they're asking you to show evidences on how you run your daily business, you're able to show them this is how much I make daily, this is how much I make weekly, this is how much I put back into my business on a monthly, on a weekly, and as such, that person would look at you like Dario said, as somebody that has really taken this business as his own nine to five, like I said. Thank you very much, Dario. Um, this person, Sulia Taliu, would like you to please tell her how she can get suppliers. 
that can supply her on credits. Yes. What are those things she can oh. do to get suppliers that can supply her on credits? Oh, okay. Um, first of all, you need to be a loyal customer. Do you buy regularly from the supplier? Do you have a, a standard business? That means you are in a shop, you are not running away, you have good reputation around, not that you are the one that you are fought with everybody in the market. Then ask, ask your supplier. Sometimes some things are available for us, but because we do not ask, we do not get. Ask your supplier, oh, I have 500,000, I want to buy 10 carton of so so thing. And it's supposed to be 700. I have 500. But if you give me now, before now and the end of today, I can sell 200. Then I can pay you back. Ask. You will get. Ask. But ensure that, first of all, you have a good reputation. There's no supplier because the truth is, you know, we talk. People talk. People hear. But when you are loyal to your supplier and you, and you have a good reputation among customers, Go sellers and things like that, you will get suppliers credit and ask. Even if the credit is not available, if you are good to your supplier, you will know the discounts are available in the company. You will know what's what's available and what you can benefit from from the company. But if you are the type that is everybody you insult, I'm, I'm sorry, you people might not be able to come out and tell you the truth about some things that you can benefit from around you. Okay. Thank you very much. And so on that note, we are attending to the very last question. And this last question is asking, please, ma'am. Um, my question is not about today's training. I learned that after registering with CAC, we are supposed to pay some money yearly, which if we pay can affect our business. If we do not pay can affect our business. I need more enlightenment in on this. Um, Adedayo, that will be our last question. Can you please do justice to this question? Thank you. All right, thank you very much for asking this question. I actually asked someone to ask this question because uh, people kept talking about CACCs and I know it's because of things like this, we need to correct this notion. First of all, when you talk about what you are required to pay is tax, but you do not pay. See, um, I don't know. I think LSD would actually take a training on taxation for SMEs. So you can know what tax and what tax you are not to pay. What when to pay tax, when not, which tax are your own? There are a lot of tax. Which ones are yours? You are starting a business now. When do you start to pay tax? When do you don't pay tax? You know, you need all those information. I'm sure LSTF will do a training about taxation to enlighten you about some of these things. But the truth is this. When you get your business registered, I don't know how much you think they're asking you to pay yearly. No. No, register your business, start with the business venture if you don't want to go into a limited liability company because it's complex and this like that. Start with a venture, register your business as, as a venture. Even if you are required to pay, you pay for that CAC itself. When you pay for the CAC and you are required to um, um, get a um, tax number so that you can open accounts in your business name, that is when you get tax number and open account in your business name. The benefits far outweigh whatever. Whatever you be required to pay will be based on what you are making. At the end of the year, you require to pay a certain amount, but it's not even immediately. There are some certain number of years you used to still do that business before you start paying tax. So I really don't know what you have heard, but I need to let you know that the benefit of registering your business far outweighs whatever it is you think is stopping you from registering it. People take it seriously. Your business has standard and structure when you have registered it. And uh, uh, lenders tend to lend more and um, higher value to people who have registered businesses. I mean, I do not, I won't be sugarcoating it uh, for you thinking, oh, it's because they want us to register or oh, it's because they want us to pay tax. No. Unfortunately, I don't work in tax company, but because I know that as an SME, it will go a long way to help your business. That's why I'm saying this. So when you get to learn more about the tax six that you should pay and the ones that really does not affect you for now, then you will know that um, uh, registering your business with the CAC is actually a good thing to do. Okay. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow, thank you very much, um, Adedayo. Awesome. 
We actually attended to all of the questions, 48 of them, and that's awesome. Thank you very, very much. We must have done a lot of justice to gray areas that people came, people came with their pen and paper, writing it down, wanting to know, please, this is very important. I mean, money is what we're talking about here. And yes, money, so. they say, is um, very important to scale yes. businesses. That's what we're exchanging it anyway. So it's important to understand the strategies involved in making such exchange. So thank you very much, Adedayo. Um, I really want you to do like a, 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 a recap, like a, wrapping it up so that even for those that joined just a few minutes ago, they can at least benefit something and then we bring the session to an end. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. I would like to start business and they just um, expect the business to still remain small like that. So I like to tell people this. See, when they are talking about, oh, the GDP of the nation, the this of the nation, they're actually talking about you. So that business, you might have started it just because you want to send your child to school or you want to have food on the table. I want you to know that as an SME, your business is contributing to a larger picture. When we are talking about all this data about Nigeria, we're talking about you. Your business matter. Your business is valuable. You are solving problems. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. All the data we have is telling us that you are the one that's going to remove Nigeria from poverty. So please stop looking down on that business. This is a time for you to scale. It's time for you to expand. There's nothing stopping you from having more than one sales point. We'll say you must sell from one point. Sell online, sell physical, sell everywhere you can sell. Keep doing your business. Understand that this business might have started small. It does not have to remain small. Put all your knowledge into your business, your intellect. Learn more about the business. Stop watching the world. Watch what matters to your business. Put it in your business. That business matter. It is valuable. Don't look down on your business. Take the loan that is right fit. Use it to scale up your business. Trust me, Nigeria is depending on your business. You matter that much, okay? So don't look down on your business. Put it all in it because your business is adding to a larger data, okay? Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much, Adedayo. And on that note, I would like to say thank you all very much for staying put on this session. I am hoping that it has been a very impactful and knowledgeable session for you and that you have grabbed a lot that you can use to scale your business. Please join us on our next session on the 30th of August, where we will be talking on building organizational resilience during this economic downturn. We all know that this economy for business owners has been a very interesting one at that. And as a business owner, what do you need to know? How do you need to put your resilience, your resilience clothes on in order for your business not to awash and you're unable to stand firm within this turbulent period? Please join us on the 30th of August where we'll be making justice with an expert in the house to talk about this topic. We hope to see you at that topic. Um, at that session, I mean, and we hope that with all that you've learned on this session, you're able to take your business from where it is to a higher level. Thank you for all the time. Thank you for always wanting to learn. Thank you for always coming up here to pick from what we bring for you and what we teach on all of our, on all of our webinar sessions. And a big thank you to Mrs. Abde Dayo Adewale, Thank you very, very much for sharing your knowledge and helping this um, MSMEs to understand what and what they can put in place in order to scale up on their businesses. Thank you so much for being on this session. And so it's a wrap from us at LSETF. We hope that you enjoyed the rest of your day and that you would do the right thing with your business. Thank you all very much. Do not forget to join us on the 30th of Thank August. You. And please, after this session, kindly fill the survey. This will help us to know how best to serve you as your partner in growing your business. And so from us, it's a bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Bye, everyone.